Chat on Score North and scorenorth.com. We got frustrated. Um, they pushed and, uh, um, you know, we had a lot of guys playing a lot of minutes there in the second period and a lot of guys not. So we really, uh, we really shot ourselves. They clearly pushed real hard. I mean, our first period was as good as it gets. Their second was as good as it gets, but uh, but we fed into it by by the penalties for sure. Um, so I think that's probably what got away from us. And welcome in to Mackie and Judd. Actually, today Phil is out. Action Movie Rewind Friday. So uh, Chip Scoggins is going to se- spend the first segment or two with us talking about uh, what we just heard Dean Evison discussing, the Wilds' loss last night uh, in spectacular fashion, really, over the last two periods to the Golden Knights. Um, Predator is the action mo- movie rewind film that we review that Mackie will join us for. And let me tell you right now, there are a lot of thoughts about Schwarzenegger's <laughs> classic 1987. <laughs> Chipper, I had never seen it. I had never seen it. And it was, um, let me just say, I was pleasantly surprised. So I, I'm i going to make an embarrassing admission here. I've never seen it. <laughs> I hadn't seen it either. I, I thought I had. None of us have, I think. Yeah, none yeah. of us have. So Dex had. I, I, I've, but Dex yeah, is I've well, seen it. So. That's right. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, we were live. It, it's one of those ones that when it's on, I just kind of skip right over. It's, it's not <laughs> like Point Break stops me in my tracks every time. That one, yes. I kind of Ro- Roadhouse stops you. Point Break, <laughs> Goodfellas for sure. Goodfellas, you're yeah, you get you're, you're not going to bed if Goodfellas shows up. <laughs> oh hell no, no, that, that is a two and a half hour investment. All right, so boys, let's talk about, um, with Phil out today, let's talk about what happened at the X last night. It was a a 5-2 Golden Knights win against the Wild. And right before we started recording, Chip, you used the word that I think is completely appropriate. It was weird how the Wild, and by the way, this is the new Wild, right? Like, this is not the team that's the teams that we've seen for so long. How they came out in the first period, took a two nothing lead, and just were fantastic, and then gradually disappeared. I think you, yeah. I think your word nailed it perfectly. I think it was just weird how it went from, you know, the wild going eighty five to going forty five. Yeah, and it felt like to me that that yeah that game pivoted when that. The third goal was disallowed with the offsides. Vegas came right back after that and got on a power play. They didn't score. But from then on, it just felt like the Wild stopped playing. Mm-hmm. It was were on their heels. They were, um, you know, the way they came out, they really took the fight to them and were putting all kinds of pressure on Flurry and they were buzzing and, and throwing pucks at him. And then <laughs> they just stopped playing. I, I don't get it. I mean, it was those those – the second and third periods, they, they could not have been more back on their heels and just let Vegas dictate anything they wanted to do. So I, I, I don't know what happened to flip that switch other than maybe, you know, not having that 3-0 lead and taking the wind out of themselves. But, I, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, it's, we haven't seen that team in a while. I'll say that. No. And what's weird, though, is you got – so so like the whole thing with this team from – Day one, and Dean talked about this, and I actually respect it a lot. The whole thing was resilience, right? Like, okay, it's COVID, but we can't do a thing about that. So we're going to play. Like, we, like, yes, the circumstances for the 2021 season aren't good, but there's, but we can't change them. Um, and I really respected the fact that they sort of just pushed through, right? And mm-hmm. like, and like, to, so to what you're saying, if, if what had happened last night had happened in 2018, I, w- I would have said, oh, yeah, of course. You know, like, yeah, they, they just stopped. That's how they are. Uh, but these guys had truly shown something different. And that's where I don't get, where would that um, switch have been flipped with this group? That's what, like, I'm trying to figure that that out. And, and you can say, well, it's just a blip. It, it was a bad game or, you know. But I'm sorry. When I see a red flag like that from this team, I don't think you can dismiss it. Well, yeah, I don't think you dismiss it, and it, and it maybe you, maybe it'll prove to be a blip. But hey, this isn't February. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is the play. You, you can't just stop playing um, because things don't go your way, or you feel like the refs are calling stuff. I mean, you know what? Overcome it. You can't. Let's not blame the refs. Okay. Yeah. What was Fiala getting hooked or held? Yes, but you know what? Who cares? Keep playing and. 
for that, if that's what disrupted him and, and, and threw them off. Now, the one thing I, I do wonder about um, is how much did Johansson's injury and having to shuffle lines and you're playing with different guys that maybe you're not accustomed to, does that throw your game off uh, to that degree? Not to that degree. And again, I'll come back to, they prided themselves on pushing through things. And, and like, sure. I'm, I'm sorry, Johansson going out is not like Erickson Eck going out. So, so yeah, no, I'm not right. No, no. I'm saying it can throw you off a little bit, but he's a third line winger. So like, you're just substituting like Bukestead in. Yeah. Um, so no, it wouldn't have done that. And, and look, I had a, I actually in, in the press box watching the game last night, had a bit of a revelation about what I realized about officiating. Okay. Cause I saw on Twitter fans were going crazy. Like the, yeah. the wild fans were upset. And you know what, in the first period, when to what you're saying, they missed the Fiala call, which directly impacted that goal. And they missed a few things. I thought to myself, these guys are having a bad night officiating. Um, but the wild was playing its ass off. And so it's like, it's like they were, they were being hurt because they were playing so hard where I don't have any sympathy for the wild in the last two periods of that game is if you just let your foot off the gas and the officials screw you too bad. Like, yeah, like you, you you're not, you're no longer helping yourself to be in a position where I feel empathy for you because the officials aren't doing a great job. Well, and that's the thing it, it's, you know, it was a bad call and they should have, you know, it, you know, whether you're up three and oh, or, or you're, you know, on a, power play there or whatever but you, you can't that can't just be a blanket excuse for not playing well the rest of the game because of one call i mean it's that that call didn't uh limit them to 16 shots on goal <laughs> you know i mean Correct. you've got to be able to overcome that and so um and and you know i would say give vegas credit too we saw when they want to crank it up they're pretty darn good um, and I think you saw probably them at their best last night, the way they control the puck, uh, user, you know, they, they have some, you know, stone <laughs> I and mean, they have some just stones. Oh, on he's that. good. Yeah. He's really good. I love the way he's a tough son of a gun, you know? Um, but so I think you have to give them the credit too, for taking it to the wild, but there's gotta be a better response than that. So I, I, I gotta imagine you're going to see the best that they have to throw at uh, Saturday night. Because if you don't, then it's, you know, then that red flag is a, a becomes a major red flag that you talked about. Dex, what, what's your thought here? Because it, it does seem like it's now pivotal, I think, in this series for for what Chip just said to happen. Like, they've got to come back really strong now. Like, you can't have a that, – that was so tepid for the last two periods – that there has to be a response to basically sort of wash away the the stench that this really looked like the old wild in the sense yeah. that they just sort of punted. They just sort of gave up. Yeah, it was frustrating to watch just because, and, and there were some horse bleep calls. You can blame the referees, but the referees aren't in charge of you shooting nine times over the last 40, pay, <laughs> 40 minutes of the game. I mean, you, you came yeah. out in the first period, you solved flurry right away, and you thought, oh my goodness, the floodgates are going to open. And there's a ticky tack offsides call because you know you're 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 challenging offsides even before the play happens. But like that, that's the rule. That's why they have this new offsides rule in place so you can catch these kind of things. And for you to just kind of quit for the last 40 minutes of that game, that's not on the referees. That's completely on you. And then also, I I thought Vegas, which honestly this part surprised me because they're not known to have staunch defense. Their blue line is is what is suspect. Um, Flurry is obviously phenomenal. They have great depth up top. They can score with uh, with all four lines basically, but they just it, it seemed like they put a clamps down and getting nothing towards Fleury. like the Wild had nothing outside that last scrum the last two minutes when in any hockey game gets crazy like that. Outside of that last two minutes when the Wild were down two goals, they couldn't get anything towards Flurry, and I think that's a credit to Vegas just having a great shutdown defense, which I don't think we'll see again throughout the series. Like Chip said, you know that was the best they played over the last 40 minutes by far. And they are a damn good team. Like, they they can play to that level, and and they obviously competed for the President's Trophy, so they're one of the best teams in the NHL. But for the Wild just to have anemic offense over that last 40 minutes, like, that's not on the Zebras. That's on you. That is 100% on you. So, Johansson going out, that shortens your bench a little bit, but at the same time, you need Fiala and Kaprizov. You need that. You need both those guys to start stepping up a little more. 
Yeah, and it's it's interesting on Kaprizov. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say he's playing poorly, but he's finding out playoff hockey's different in the way it's being. Um, you know, the way they check you, the way they yes. grab you, the way they're physical with you, the way they take away your ice and, and neutralize his ability to get out in open ice and skate the puck up. I mean, he just hasn't had many of those. I mean, you could probably count on one hand the number of times in the first three games where he's gotten the puck and really kind of brought it up the ice with, with speed, right? I mean, anytime yep. they're all over him. And, and we said it going in that when they made out their scouting report, it's clear whose name was number one on that list, you know, yep. and he's feeling it right now. Now, you know, the pass was a beautiful pass to set up uh, Hartman on a goal. That was, a, a you know, a typical um, Kaprizov, you know, pass through traffic. I texted Judd right after. He was like, how do you even see him there? But um, but he's finding out that, uh, one, you're a marked man, and two, playoff hockey's different. Yep, and that's the thing is, I, I think the best – way to look at that is they don't give you space like in the season it's it can be tough but i mean you have space you ultimately do in the playoffs you don't and and he thrives in space he thrives in being in the quiet areas of the offensive zone and sort of parking himself there and getting the puck and in the playoffs those areas are essentially eliminated consistently um and last night he and fiala were both minus threes and in this series they're a combined minus seven and i will say this i do think like i, I don't think you can just punt here too like i don't think you, you could just say well caprice being shut down and so that's you got to find a way now if you're caprice if you're dean you've got to find a way to counter that and and to sort of counter punch what the golden knights are doing to you to get him involved way more because if we're going to just accept well he's not going to be a, a big factor you're going to lose in about five games well that's it are you talking shuffling who he plays with or i'm, I'm saying strategically i'm saying i'm saying one strategically i i mean i've been advocating and so is dex chipper that he should play with fiala more and he did in the third period saw at the night. end yeah yeah so yeah. so they did that but no i'm saying strategically i'm saying you, you got to watch the film and see what they're doing um, to take away his time and space and at least counter that. Cause like, you can't just accept that this team is not deep enough, right. To yeah. be like, well, Caprice is being taken away. And so, you know, what's going to happen. Nick Bukestad's going to explode. Like <laughs> they, they don't have that gear. And yeah. Fiala uh, had eight shots on goal in game two and was fantastic. And Flurry was great. So yeah. I think what you have to do for, for Saturday is I think you have to spend a day looking at a way to at least create opportunities for Kaprizov. Yeah, and we and we you know we thought coming home and having the last change you'd be able to get the matchups that you wanted. And maybe they did last night. Um, I think they did. And it still didn't, you know, it didn't other than the, the the assist, but you're right. Um at this point when you've what is it uh four goals in three games? Is that what they scored? Yeah. Yep. Two two. yeah. Yep, two, yep, four goals. So you you I mean you you should be open to anything at this point because um, you know, they're the, they have a great game playing, whatever they're doing against Kaprizov is, is, uh, bottled him up. And so you're going to have to try different things to try to get him going. Cause you're right. I mean, you can't just count on guys on your third and fourth line, giving you that unexpected scoring. Cause it, you know, that's just not a reliable way. You need your top players. Uh, so, um, it'll be interesting. I would assume going back to that, what we were talking about is, you know, the full, you know, bringing everything you have tomorrow night. I would assume Parisi draws in now a spark with his energy and, you know, just having, you know, his presence back in there. I would think it has to be him, right? It's him or Boldy. And that th th I, it has to be Parisi. I'm sorry. Uh, here's the thing. Parisi isn't so Parisi's speed in this series is going to be a serious detriment, which I think, they, they will look at. And the other thing is if he comes in, if he draws in, I don't think he replaces Johansson. I think Bukestead or somebody moves up to the third line and Parisi plays on the fourth line and, and he do, does not play much. Uh, the fact that Boldy is young and faster and has thrived at every place he's played makes him an intriguing option. And Chip, I'll tell you this, and I don't, don't know if 
you agree. Perhaps you'll think it's a conspiracy theory on my part because I do enjoy those. But <laughs> but do you but 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 do you have a feeling by this point in time with Parisi, it's also become a little political? Um, like I think it started as a you're really not good enough to play now, but I feel like it's jumped to something that's more like I'm not I'm not going to be nearly as shocked if he doesn't play as I would have been two weeks ago if the situation was the same. Yeah, and, and I do know you love conspiracy theories. We work together for. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, well, if it is Boldy, then, and I, I don't know that Parisi was coming back next year anyways, but that would definitely be the final, you know, if he can't I draw, come back, yeah. Yeah, I don't either, but um, but they may look at it as, you know what, he, for, it could be some political stuff like, hey, we're, we're this is another uh, indication that we're, you know, Changing the culture, we're turning this over. But I would, if you feel like he gives you your best chance, I would not be playing mind games right now. <laughs> you know, I mean, it would be we're trying to send messages. I would be trying to put my best line about there. And if you feel like his veteran presence um, would help you or, or give you a spark versus someone else, I, I think I go that route. But it, but clearly, they feel like something. You know, he because even when he was playing, he wasn't playing much. You know, he had the, the uh, smallest amount of ice time of being back in the, in the lineup. So, um, but uh, I, I still think you, you go with the veteran and the guy who's played in the playoffs and, and you know, maybe gives your teammates, maybe gives the fans, you know, gets them going a little bit, something to give you a spark. So I, I, I think I would be a little surprised if it's not him. I, you know, I, there's always the, the narrative of what they should do or what you want them to do. You know, like yeah. what 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 they should do is probably they're gonna they they probably should play Parisi. They probably should because he's the veteran. We want them to most likely play Boldy, who is this young, fast, top prospect. There's no better time than right now, basically. You know, Colorado did this with Cal McCarr three years ago. He made his debut in the postseason, had a nice little showing through 10, 11 games where they got bounced in the second round, and now McCarr is obviously one of the best defensemen in the NHL. At the same time. I think it's more likely that they do bring in Parisi just because of his veteran nature. But, but to Judd's point, I mean, it, does that does that make him happy? Like, does does is is it is it more just a political game at this point with with Zach Parisi? Because I I mean, this is it, right? Like, this is the end of the Zach Parisi era. Whether he's being bought out, yeah. traded, or whatever happens this summer going into next season, this is the end of his era for sure. And I would rather see Boldy just because of his more skill and, and he brings, I think, a, a skill set that this team desperately needs to match up with Vegas and maybe even Colorado down the road if you're lucky enough to get there. But it, it is going to be an interesting one because Johansson clearly I don't think is going to play on. In no, court. well, yeah, and, and Dean said last night, he said, what do you say, it doesn't look great. So yeah, I'm guessing something, you know, arm, looks like he smashed his arm into the, into the post there. Is there any chance... You bring in both players. Is there anyone else that gets scratched out of that lineup? Ooh, talk mm-hmm. about conspiracy theories. Talk about <laughs> yeah. I I haven't given this a bit of thought, but yeah, I I mean you certainly could, right? And you could play like you're not gonna I, I think Bukestead safe because he is he's been very or I, I thought he I thought he actually was good last night and thrived after jo, uh, Johansson went out. He played pretty well at times. Um I guess the guy I guess the odd man out to be scratched would be Sturm. Because but, you know he's pretty good on the PK. I know he is, and and he opens the PK with Benino, which to me, yeah. But, but like Dean doesn't seem to trust him five on five as much, and you could move and you could move theoretically Bukestead to center because he he can play there. Uh and you that might be too Pre- much changing. Crazy <laughs> on the wing. Well, that's the thing with Dean is. I don't sense he likes change at all. Like, I think once things are set, he likes to ride that as long as possible. He'll juggle lines. But I think as far as the lineup construction goes, as far as who's playing, he likes to keep that the same. I, I'm just saying that I don't think that they would bring in two new guys or two guys who haven't yeah. been playing. But there certainly would be a path to do it if you thought that that would, would help you. But your point about Sturm on the PK is the best one because – I got to think if you open PKs with him out there, yeah, there there's, there's there's a value that you don't want to lose for the sake of trying to juggle things. Yeah, I if a guy's on your top PK unit, I mean, are you really going to scratch him at this point? Um, I actually thought he did a really nice job last night. I like him a lot. I'd play him more. Yeah. 
I play yeah. more. I I like his speed. I think his speed is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Dean is uh, D, there, there's a few things. There's a few Dean Everson things that he's been very steadfast about, and one is Rask just plays no matter what. Yeah. And and um, the second one to me is that Sturm either stays in that role or gets scratched, and like there doesn't seem to be a lot he can do to get moved up. He was moved up. Uh, occasionally and also scratched during the course of the season, but it, it seems right now like they've got him exactly where they want to play him. Yeah, and when you look at their uh, Vegas's goals last night, I mean, it's hard to pin those on Talbot, right? I mean, you know, the first one was just a good goal. I mean, Stone, you know, he's in the slot, makes it, you know. Well, yeah, the Wild watched the play. Yeah, second one, Sturm drops his stick and he's going back to retrieve it. it you know, bounces off the backboard and yep, Gordon pops over his stick. And then the third one hit, I think it hit Brodine like up near his shoulders or head and just was falling around there. So it's like, yep. yeah, it's not weird goals, but kind of the puck luck goals there where it hits you and, you know, but, um, so I, yeah, I, I, I don't think you bring, you, you take Sturm out of lineup. You know, um, I, I would agree too. I, I'm just saying that would probably be the only way to get both of th- those guys in. I don't, if again, I have no idea what the appetite to play Zach is. Like, I just don't, I can't tell. Well, well not great, obviously, because, <laughs> you right, know. But, but I'm saying so. I, I think you're right. I think he'll play. I'm just saying, I, I, if there's more going on behind the scenes that we don't know about where they really don't want to play him. There are alternatives, but yeah, I, I think Sturm's done a nice job, and I don't think Sturm has done a thing that should get him scratched. No, and you know, the one, you, you know, I don't think you penalize him for going back and getting a stick and score a goal. I mean, that's... Right. I don't know what he's supposed to do at that point. Um, if Parisi draws in, it will be interesting to see how he plays and where he's at. Is there... You know, does he play angry? You know, is there some motivation? Is he, you know, fresh? Um, have some fresh legs? He could give him a spark, Judd. I mean, for all you know, his age yeah. and he, he's, you know, probably doesn't fit with the style of play that they want to do, the faster pace. But um, if you wouldn't be motivated in that spot, then you probably, you know, it's not going to happen. You know what? I would never accuse him of of not bringing it or not being motivated Correct. properly. 100%. I would yeah. never accuse him of that. I, I really think the question would be, could he translate that to keep up? Yeah, physically. Because like, I, I don't yeah. ever think, I, I mean, I certainly have issues with how that team ran with Zach and Ryan back in the day and things like that. Uh, but I've never and never will question effort there. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, like there, there, there's never been, I mean, I... It was it was really dumb to stay on the ice to supposedly try and help get Felino an empty net goal against the Golden Knights in the the uh, first time that they met during the season, and that got him scratched. And it probably should have. Yeah. But that being said, I don't think effort has ever been a problem. No. It, it, it would. Lit- my my question back to what you just said would be: Could he translate what? he's feeling and his desire to be effective into the speed of the series. And I just don't know. He would be certainly rested. So like you wouldn't be tired, but that still doesn't mean that you suddenly um, uh, gain miles per hour because you're not tired, especially in, in against teams like this that are so skilled. Well, that's the thing. It's like, it's, I mean, this is a fast paced series and it probably would be hard to just jump in that and be at the same level that, Uh, And maybe, maybe you can, I I don't know, but it just seems like it might take you a little bit to get your, your game up to speed with, (laughs) with the fact. And I don't know there's a gear, but I don't know. He's got the gear too. Yeah. um, Like like you're right. You know, after being sitting and, and, you know, and bottled up, it may come flowing out where you, you know, you have that jump because you're so anxious and mad or whatever emotions he has. He probably has a lot of emotions right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but maybe that, that would give you a little spark to play ab- above the level that you you're capable of even, you know, we've seen it. Um, but, it, but it can't just be that, you know, it's gotta be from the whole group that they should be 
ticked off this morning. When they woke up, they should be mad. Yeah. You know? I think you saw was it Hartman's quote. I thought he was the most forceful after the game yeah. where he said basically we didn't do anything, you know. Yeah. So I'm I don't know if they're practicing today or, or if he typically gives them the day off the rest, but um they should wake up pretty angry at themselves this morning. The one thing too why I, I think they should be really mad and why they blew an opportunity is I'll say this in splitting the first two games, those games were both great. And like game mm-hmm. two, game two, I did not have a problem with that loss. Like it was a tough loss, but, but you played well, like you, you were engaged, you lost, uh, the golden Knights are really good. But last night was the first game where they blew the opportunity of, of the fact that the guy who led the Knights in goals, Max patch who had 24 isn't playing he's hurt and i don't know when he's coming back but every game he doesn't play is basically a gift because like yeah. they like the golden knights don't have a ton of guys that can finish they've got really good players but patch is is their guy who can basically bury the puck and with him not playing and you being at home for you to play that well for the first period and then just go in the tank and have nine shots in the last two periods um Patch Reddy's going to come back here, I would guess, eventually, and it might be tomorrow. And <laughs> yeah, and, and that and that essentially puts an all star on the ice for them. So, like last night was a blown opportunity for a multitude of of uh, reasons. Yeah, and I was following one of the Vegas beat writers, and uh, you know, it almost seemed like they they felt like it was a game time decision, or there was a chance that Patch Reddy was going to play last night. So, mm-hmm. I, I got to imagine the longer this goes, he's going to get in eventually here it sounds like he's close at least so mm-hmm. um now he's been off too so there might be some rust and he has to get up to speed to so you know but it's a really good player you're bringing back into your lineup yes so exactly. um so yeah i mean it's it's um you know if they can play well and get a win tomorrow night you know i think you would that's you know that's the beauty of these playoffs you know, you you came back from Vegas feeling good about yourself. Hey, yep. you know, you had two, but happy with the way they played. Now you're angry. Now you're almost feeling like, oh God, your back's against the wall. Now you got to, you know, so just the ebbs and flow. I think we talked about this on our on our podcast. Judd. Just the ebbs and flows of a playoff series where just the momentum swings back and forth, and one day you feel great about where you're at, and the next day you feel like the sky's falling. You know, absolutely. So what what's your pick for tomorrow then? I think they win. I think they win. Yeah, I think you're going to see their best effort tomorrow night. Um, you know, I, I think I don't think they I mean, they didn't solve but those first couple. Those first two goals felt like they had the blueprint right. Put the pressure on them. You know, you know, create a lot uh, of you know, put bodies around them. Try to be there for so you know the the. Was it the first one or second one was a rebound that Eck got? Um, so I felt like they saw that, hey, this guy's not, you know, invincible. You could, you could score in the first couple of games. It felt like they were everything they threw at him. He was just, you know, waving that glove around and catching it. Yep. So I thought it felt like they, they finally were starting to pierce the armor a little bit. And so um, I think they win tomorrow night. I think they, they have their best effort. And um, I think they'll go back to Vegas tied up. Dex, I'm, your... uh, yeah, I'm, I'm frozen on the screen right now because I'm oh. so perplexed on what I could possibly do because uh, my camera is frozen just trying to think about Alex Tuck uh, <laughs> daggering the, the Minnesota Wild from a, from a, from a for, former player's standpoint. My God, I mean, watching him play the, these last few games, you can tell he likes yeah. sticking it to his old team. It's, well, it's pretty well, he hilarious, should. and he should. Mm-hmm. Um, my gut tells me in game four that the Wild, yeah, do bounce back and play their best effort, and it's it'll it'll be the telltale sign for the rest of this series. Because if the Wild don't come out, and and I know the history, everyone knows the history of the Wild being down three games to one. They did it twice in one year. It was also 17 years ago, a completely different group. I don't want to hear that. So if you don't come out and show up in game four, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty much over. Sign, seal, delivered, it's over. I think they win as well, but here here's the, the thing that I will say about this team, and I, I think this is the first time I've said this, uh, Chip, about this team this season. I have some doubts. Like that, game on Thursday night put some doubt in my mind. Like I thought, 
I thought I knew who this team was, and I still sort of do, okay? So I'm not dismissing all of the good that they did in being resilient during the course of the season. But for the first time, I'm like really curious to be like, because because that was, those last two periods were so bad. Like mm-hmm. they were so yeah. bad. And, and I really thought, and, and so in being at the game and watching it, and I, I'm not sure what you thought, I really thought that they would come out down a goal. So not by much in that third period on Thursday night and play great. Like I thought, okay, that's a blip. They'll get this fixed. I mean, because for the most part, they've done that. They've gotten things fixed. And so they'll get things fixed and they'll be fine. And they didn't. And so I do think that they'll win. I still like this team, but this is the first time I think during the course of this season where I've been like, okay, I think, I think I know this now, but I'm not nearly as positive as I was going into Thursday's game. Yeah, they. You're right. Last night was. <clears throat> they showed you a characteristic that we have not seen, and so it gives you pause. It makes you step back and say, "What, what was that?" Now, wait a second here, because exactly. they have all a bit about resilience and not being flustered and not being thrown off their game by anything. And um, you know, you go back to game one, and they're just getting run off the ice, and it's they can't do anything right. Well, they came back the next two periods. And we're the better team. Um, and so for them to really have no response last night and just quit playing basically um, was a head scratcher. And so, but I, I also think I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here, Judd. I'm going to say that was a one-off. I'm going to say for whatever reason they, they stopped, they just fell apart on them and they couldn't get it back. Um, but I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that um, you're going to see uh, probably a, inspired effort tomorrow night and if it's not i agree with declan it's over in five i just if you lose that one i don't see him uh as much as we we just talk about their response and resilience um it it needs to show up in game four and i said knights in in six so i need them to win tomorrow night (laughs) okay you can blow it then but i'll be very ticked off if if it's knights in, in five uh chip before we let you go. I got to ask you about this. What was your take on the whole uh, target field um, de- kerfuffle this week? La Russa, um, th- the home run off Astadio, uh, who, yeah, I, who, who I guess if I guess if your main, your mean Mercedes had hit a three one pitch, we're okay with that. But but I mean, what's your what was your whole take? Because I just from a starting point, have you ever in your no. life? seen a manager defend a team that ends up with with its manager being suspended for a game <laughs> and the pitcher being suspended initially for three games it got reduced to two for Tyler Duff. Yeah, I, I thought the whole thing was absurd. I, I must not understand baseball. I really don't. I, I, these unwritten rules, I just it, it makes me roll my eyes. And this is why baseball's got major issues. And, and <laughs> Tony La Russa, honestly, <laughs> basically <laughs> inviting the Twins that – being his guy, it's like, how does he think that's going to go over in his clubhouse? Right. Like, I, here's here's the thing: when you embarrass yourself to the degree that the Twins have, and you're getting beat that bad, and you put out a position player to throw 45 miles an hour, don't say anything. You deserve anything you get. Yeah. You know, I don't care what they do. He he could have done cartwheels around the bases, and you shouldn't have said anything. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it's. You're an embarrassment, and you're going to be mad because someone swung at 3-0. I just don't understand baseball at all. I mean, just – you're right, Jeff. Okay, let's say he takes that pitch, and then he hits the 3-1. That's better? I mean, well, it, it makes no sense. And so I didn't understand the Twins getting mad. I didn't understand, you know, and then coming back the next day and throwing it. And don't tell me, you know, they threw at him. Um, and La Russa ripping his own player and then, you know, basically saying, I, I didn't have a problem with them throwing at my player. I mean, you got to, you know, you got to atone for your sin. I mean, honest to God, the baseball is so. He said, he said, I didn't think he was throwing at him. I agree with what the twins said. <laughs> the, pitch, the pitch was behind Mercedes's leg. <laughs> I, saw, I saw somebody on Twitter when Duffy got it reduced. They said it must have been La Russa there. <laughs> that reduced. Yeah. <laughs> it's just pitching. It was the most remarkable thing I've ever yeah. seen. Like, these these, yeah. these, un, these unwritten rules in baseball are ridiculous. I mean, well, well, and then how? And then what I don't get though is if they're unwritten rules. So, like, 
I would think the rule would read if, if they were a- actually to commit these rules to a rule book, the unwritten rule would read thou shall not make a, a team that's down by a lot. It's pitcher look like an idiot. If it's a real pitcher, because you know, that's my profession. And, yeah. and, and I mean, <clears throat> Williams Astadio that at that point in time, you know, it's a complete joke. You're right. He's a position player who, by the way, you know, the fans were cheering wildly when he came into pitch because one, the team stinks and they were bored and it's Astadia, you know, La Tortuga. So like the unwritten rule should have a disclaimer saying if it's a guy like La Tortuga pitching and he's basically throwing softballs up there, go ahead and swing. Well, that's the thing. He's throwing EFAS pitches. I mean, they're 45 miles an hour. I mean, it is like slow pitch softball, where you, like the beer league, where you're trying to, you know, crank him over the fence. So I, at that point, you wish, you know, even if you were mad, which you shouldn't have been, just keep it to yourself. I mean, it makes you look, it makes you look silly to come out and saying, yeah, we had, you know, there's some guys that were pretty upset in the dugout. It's like, so getting beat sixteen to four didn't yeah. make him mad, but the guy hitting a home run, that's that's going to push him over the edge. So oh. J- Josh Donaldson was mad. Okay, big deal. Yeah. I don't care. He's an old school guy. That that's fine. I did I did realize though. So so like I there were a few people on Twitter, you know, who who were saying stuff about how he shouldn't have swung, blah blah blah, which is just stupid. But anyway, uh, it did hit me that if the unwritten rules are truly going to be enforced, with at times the next day a baseball being thrown at a person, which is not a great idea. No, um, it it hit me what the ru- what they should do. If you are intent on basically saying, "Hey, we're up by." I, it was 15 to four at the time, I think 15, four. Yeah. Um, if you know, if you're intent on saying we're up by 11, that's enough. You should be able to decline the at bat because that's yeah. the kneel. That's the kneel down. Sure. But, but I saw, I saw a tweet that said, <clears throat> well, in football, they'll, you know, if, if you're up late in the game, you don't throw a touchdown pass. No. Cause you kneel down the victory yeah. formation, yeah. the baseball <laughs> victory. And, and by the way, this would speed up the game. So I applaud it. If yeah. the White if the White Sox could have said we're all good, we're done, you know, l- let the Twins try again, uh, but but we decline our at bat, three outs, just re- record them. Seriously, like if that's going to be your rule, if if there's yeah. going to be a if there's going to be a baseball kneel down, it's declining yeah. your at bat. Yes, and and okay, can you imagine the purest over that one? <laughs> but but they're the ones who put the guy on second base. I'm yeah. giving. But I'm giving them a choice here. Do you want to have a 3-0 pitch swung at? And and, and I mean, yeah, again, an EFIS pitch. Or do you want to decline the at-bats? Like, the peers <laughs> can't have it both ways here. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. like, like you got to come to my side on something, so I'm giving you a choice. Well, at that the point... The White Sox have declined their at-bats. <laughs> or when, when, you get, when you reach the point, you got to put Ostadio out there. That's where you're Rocco and you just come out of the dugout and you kind of tip your cap. Game over. That's it. We're, okay, we're, that's fine too. Ten run rule. That's it. We're we're moving on. I mean, let's let's not have this, you know, farce that we have to have a guy throw a 45 mile in there. But I you know, go back to the the retribution. I hate the idea of throwing, you know, all right, now you gotta go out and hit this guy. It's like that's just dangerous. I mean, I know he threw it behind his knees and but when you're purposely trying to, all it takes is one slip up. We saw a guy get hit in the face this week. Yes. Uh, fastball is like, that's a dangerous game to be playing, you know? Um, and to make a, you know, for either you tell a guy or a guy feels internally a veteran like Duffy, hey, I got to throw at this guy's knees or I got to throw at him. I mean, you know, there's too much to go wrong in that. You, you know, you talk about player safety and now you're purposely trying to hit him with a fastball. Just, I mean, I think that's silly. Well, and, and, Again, of all the things to seek retribution for, that one is absolutely yeah. the dumbest. But I just, I, I was amazed and and bemused and also somewhat miffed that the main headline from that entire thing was Tony Larusa defending the twins. Like, like that's the one. Like, like we could talk about the unwritten rules and go back and forth about how Rocco and the Twins uh, handled themselves and what the White Sox did as far as their players go, but. Their manager defended the twins yeah. with this player. And yeah, I will be internal. Well, you know, we'll handle this within <laughs> the family, like it's the mob. Yeah, it's like he he made a mistake. No. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Is like imagine being in his clubhouse and seeing your manager rip a guy for hitting a home run. That 
off a joke of a pitch. That's not a way to win over your clubhouse. I don't think. Oh, and he's what seventy five. And maybe he doesn't care. I mean, you feel like he's. You know, well, his quote, his quote, uh, when they brought the Lance Lynn quote to him for, from the next day, and yeah. and Lance, you know, rightfully so, said unwritten rules are going away. That that's BS. Yeah. You play till the game's done. Whatever Lance Lynn said, and Larusa said, "Well, he's got a locker. I got an office." <laughs> that's what he said. I just. Yeah. 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 He's oh my god! I got an office. How about? That? Oh my gosh! And and by the way, too. The other, and I, I didn't think Holy to bring this cow. up with Bill. The other thing too, Chip and, and Dex, is this one, okay? So LaRusse is all about the unwritten rules. Don't violate the unwritten rules of baseball. And he directly mentioned sportsmanship. This guy spent the better part of his managerial career writing in the name of some of the greatest steroid abusers yeah. in the yeah. era. And do you want to tell me Tony didn't know? Like, are you telling me? <laughs> oh, 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 Mark, you, you look like an Adonis today and last season you didn't you didn't lift in weights can't wait yeah can't wait to write your name in you like literally tony, <laughs> yes tony la Russa spent you know years writing in the names of mcguire and and canseco and you know how many guys that abuse steroids and he's worried about the sportsmanship of yerman mercedes oh. hit a 3-0 pitch up 15 to 4 like just yeah. like about, oh my god Judd, this is where you, if you're a writer, not being able to get and work the clubhouse. Oh, <laughs> the white you, came, yes, you're right. Could you imagine the quotes if your if writers were allowed to come into the to the clubhouse and get you know? Oh, to those guys, I can't even imagine this. Tim thing. Anderson, right? Like, like yeah, he, oh, yeah. He took to Instagram, but I would have. Uh, he would be the guy because I mean, that's that the day that Larusa got that job, he was the first guy we all pointed to and said, "This ain't gonna work." He's like one of the most progressive, fun, you know, let's do our well, thing players. It, you know, you can stomach it when you're winning, but let diversity hit or a tough patch hit, then you'll 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 hear a different tune. I would think. Oh man, thanks, Chip Scoggins. Great stuff. Much appreciated. You take care. Okay. All right, boys. We'll see you. All right, Appreciate brother. Bye bye. Yeah. Oh man. How about that? It's absurd. Jeff. How about that? It, it, it's, you know, it's, I, I told you and Phil, and you know, some people don't understand my love of the White Sox and or my love of the Green Bay Packers, and that's okay. You like that's good a teams. story for a different day. You're young. I like you're, to watch yeah, good teams. To, well, and you, I've gotten, I, and, and I've gotten, and I feel like also it's it, it. You should be proud of my sports son evolution. I am. Of I don't just. I don't just rag on a team because, oh, I don't like them. They're doing good, so screw them. Like, no, yeah. I want to watch a good team do good things. And, and also, the other thing yeah. about about people your age, and this is not a bad thing, but Chips t- talked about his kids who are, are in their teens the same way. You are a big Tim Anderson guy. Love him. Love and, him. But, but you tend to gravitate towards, and this is not unusual, and it's great. You gravitate towards players sometimes probably as much as teams. So. If you do that and you like guys, that's fantastic. And so I do not begrudge you your love of the of the Southside Hitmen one bit. Yeah, I I love watching them play, but it's hard for me to go all in when they have this before. And, and like, by the way, all of us said this. Everyone said, "What the hell are even if you get off to a good start and you fulfill your win loss, you know, projections? What the hell are you doing with this guy? What like what and and, and was it is it was it Rick Renteria? Who was their old, I think it was yeah. Renteria, their old manager. Yeah. And look, I understand making a change there. Renteria was a player's guy. I think it, the players mostly liked him, but ownership saw, hey, we can do better than this. And I, I get that. Yep. But hiring an old curmudgeon who is just a pain in the ass and the opposite of what that clubhouse is. Like mm-hmm. the complete inverse of what that clubhouse is and stands for and wants to be. Mm-hmm. And you hired that guy? I, it, it, it is, it's beyond frustrating. It's beyond frustrating. And there were choices. Like there were there good plenty young of choices. There were good young choices. And like, the old- he, like Joe Girardi is old. Joe Girardi's old school. Joe Girardi is like a bit of an old schooler guy, but also like I could have seen Joe Girardi. I could see that working. I could see that being someone that works in a, in a big market like Chicago. I can see it working and him blending his old schoolness while allowing his young players to rise up. I can see that even working well in, in Chicago. Um, but it, but if I'm, if I, if I, if I'm Tony LaRussa, I, I would, I would be grabbing the PXG clubs right now and I'd be hitting the sticks because PXG is a, a proud supporter here of Mackie and Judd. And, and that's what I would be doing. 
that's what I'd be doing. Yeah, I I would too. I and and the o- only reason why Tony got that job was the guy that owns the White Sox, Jerry Reinsdorf, felt felt guilty for f- allowing him to be fired like 33 years ago. That's the yeah, only man. reason why. And and look, this guy cheated, but I don't care. AJ Hinch would have been a good choice. Perfect choice. Yes, that would have been the Tigers, perfect choice. The Tigers stink. So, I mean, this is not, an, and he, he got the Tigers job. This is not an A.J. Hinch problem because Detroit's just terrible right now. But A.J. Hinch is exactly the type of guy in that clubhouse who would have been perfect. Yes. And, like, they've got a bunch of, because you're, you're dead on about this. They've got a bunch of fun young players who express themselves, which, by the way, is a great thing in baseball today. And, but... I mean, how do you like the quote? And Lance Lynn, while here, was a pain in the ass. So I ordinarily don't mind seeing him put in his place. He's good now. But uh, but how do you like the quote? You know, he's got a locker. I've got an office. Like this uh, old school pulling rank BS. Um, that And look, I'm 51, okay? I get the old school mentality. I get the old timers. Um, but if you really think that today's especially young players when they see a quote like that have any respect and that's what matters. So like, it doesn't matter. I I could be like, Oh good. LaRusa is showing, you know, cause he's showing them who's boss it. Okay. That's great. Guess what? They're going to tune him out. Yeah. They are going to tune him out. He's, this is not the old school. Oh my God, I'm going to lose my job. Tony doesn't like me. It is the bleep Tony. And yeah. so, yeah. The the one thing I told you and Phil this the one good thing to come from this entire thing is this as long as he's there it definitely hurts them like yeah. they they might be the best team in in the division but his presence hurts them because yeah. they're never going to reach their maximum capabilities in my opinion until a guy who says he's got a locker I got an office is gone should he's we get to pre- should we get to it Predator let's do it I'm ready okay I'm ready get to the chopper. I can't believe I had never seen this film. Like you, I'm not surprised because you're young. Again, I'm 51. I was 17 when this came out. How Mm -hmm. did I not stop on this film at some point in time in the last 30 some odd years? I don't know. But you know what? I did this week. We talked about it. We broke it down. Predator is our action movie rewind. 